At Intel, we have long been the foundation for the world's most important innovations and advancements. And we've always been about two primary things. We've been about innovation and we've been about scale. And as we make this shift to a data-centric company, we see even more opportunity ahead. Five years ago, roughly one-third of our revenue was data-centric. Today, nearly half of our revenue is data-centric and growing at double digits. And we believe that Intel is uniquely positioned to enable this insatiable appetite the world will have to process, analyze, store, and move data to drive business value. A year ago, we shared this view of the total available market that we thought Intel would pursue. From the cloud to the edge, we think we are incredibly well positioned to move and store and process more data faster. This view shows $160 billion of Silicon TAM that we were going after in 2021. Fast forward one year to today, and our views have become even more optimistic. Our updated view of the total available market that we're pursuing is $200 billion in 2022. Now, it's not lost on me that after 50 years as a company, this represents the biggest opportunity in the company's history. The, the, the TAM itself is growing at nearly double digits. And when we think about this TAM, we start with the mindset that we only have about 20% of this market today. And our ambitions are to grow faster than this TAM and to grow our share of an ever-growing market. So let me talk about three of the growth drivers underlying and underpinning this newly expanded view of our market, the cloud, the network, and AI. We've talked a lot about the cloud in the past. It is our largest single data-centric business. And uh, in Q2 of this year, it grew for us at 41% year on year. Cloud has created a massive disruption in how compute resources are delivered and consumed. Cloud is also a new way of architecting a data center that de delivers extreme performance at scale efficiently. And cloud enables millions and billions of connected devices, which drives not only new service opportunities, but generates massive amounts of data that we can use to drive businesses. And therefore, cloud is the foundation of the digital transformation. How we shop, how we receive medical treatment, how we consume our media, and how we work, none of this would be possible without the power, performance, efficiency, and flexibility of the cloud today. So we're seeing that architecture from the public cloud increasingly permeate other parts of the business. It's moving into the enterprise, the cloud architecture approach. It's moving into the network. And for us, we don't think about the public cloud growth as a zero-sum game. Two-thirds of our cloud business is TAM expansive. New consumer services, for example, uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, online video streaming, online gaming. These are all new, expansive uh, opportunities for us. In addition, this diversity of needs of our public cloud companies and customers has led to a, a, a deeper, uh, uh, intimate relationship between Intel and each of our customers. And over time, we've further customized our products for the, their needs. Five years ago, 18% uh, of our cloud service provider CPU volume was custom in nature. And last year, half of our volume shipping into the CSPs was custom in nature. Customized products, highly customized products for their needs. The second big sort of TAM driver is the network. And I'm going to include 5G and the edge when I talk about this trend we see a profound shift happening in the network. You, you might call it the cloudification of the network. This is a $24 billion silicon TAM that we're pursuing. We have about 20% of that market today. And this is a market in transformation, uh, essentially moving off of proprietary equipment to standard high volume servers. And much of that technology that the cloud service providers have deployed and adopted uh, the communication service providers now are looking to benefit from those same economics. The network needs to become something different. It's no longer sufficient 
to roll out a series of fixed function appliances or single purpose appliances. Rather, we must move the network to a series of general purpose servers using cloud technologies such as virtualization to drive the right scale, flexibility, as well as agility. We are uniquely positioned and have a distinct competitive advantage. And we have been delivering virtualized solutions to the market for well over the decade and have deep partnerships with ISVs to ensure those solutions are running efficiently on top of Intel architecture. In addition to this, we have a host of all sorts of innovative technologies to ensure that when you run your workload in a virtual machine, you can do it efficiently on top of our platforms. And because of this, Nearly all of the network virtualized deployments to date are running based on Intel architecture. Success here requires really a top to bottom approach, a top to bottom portfolio, low power envelope products, medium power envelope products, high performance products, uh, workload optimized uh, instruction set optimizations, which we've been driving in the network space for a decade now, and then of course software and ecosystem enabling to bring this all to life. The third uh, data center trend driving TAM is AI. And this trend has been well documented. and We've all talked a lot about this. It's finally reaching, I believe, an inflection point. It's moving from a technology that was sort of in the domain of the scientific elite into moving into broad deployment used by businesses around the world. We're starting to see this sort of uh, spanning of an application between edge and data center. And I believe that's going to continue in full force as we see the IoT space grow and we see AI capabilities uh, being infused all across the entire spectrum. This combination of dense compute capabilities and general purpose compute is how we're going to get there. And so we have a comprehensive AI portfolio that allows us to uh, actually take those uh, capabilities that are, were designed for high scale in the data center and move them uh, to various places where the application demands. Uh, we continue to invest in this to push the boundaries of AI. This is a $2.5 billion Silicon TAM market today, growing at double digits to $10 billion in 2022. We're investing heavily in this portfolio. It's our single biggest incremental area of investment. Uh, we're building purpose-built products for AI. We're also infusing artificial intelligence into all of our existing products. So, our strategy, very simply, is to drive a new era of data center technology. Very simply, data-centric infrastructure of the future will need to move data faster, remove the bottlenecks that we see inside of the data center as traffic continues to grow. We'll need to store more data with the ability to quickly access that data to deliver rapid and real-time insight. And of course, we'll need to process everything through a combination of general purpose computing but also workload accelerated computing products. So I'm gonna dig into this in a bit more detail, starting first with moving data faster. Our insatiable need to generate, analyze, store, create data is really, uh, is really creating a tremendous opportunity for us because all this data needs to be moved. In 2016, the, um, the data center global IP traffic was 6.8 zettabytes per year. And by 2021, that's gonna triple. So today, as compute is now distributed, as you've heard throughout the day, from edge to core, our vision is a globally connected and globally distributed compute system. This is truly at a global scale. We have a full portfolio of connectivity products going after a $4 billion TAM today. That TAM is growing to $11 billion in 2022, a 25% compound annual growth rate. We've had great success in high performance fabric products with our OmniPath portfolio. Our Ethernet 10 gig NIC portfolio of products has a number one market segment share position. And we're announcing today that we are expanding that portfolio into an emerging category that the industry refers to as smart NICs, essentially adding intelligence to the Ethernet network interface card uh, to drive uh, infrastructure offload. That's where we marry all this IP and our ecosystem of partners together and deliver full solutions to our customer. The best example of this is what Alexis just talked about and her smart neck. If you think of what that is, that's a board, that's an FPJ on it, that's some of PSG's IP, that's some of her IP, that's some partner IP, that's a software stack from Intel. That's what we're talking about and that's what we're trying to accomplish and that's what creates the multiplier and value for our customers and our shareholders. 
The biggest opportunity for us in connectivity comes in optical connectivity. Intel Silicon Photonics is something that we've been at for a number of years. We have a unique advantage there in that we are able to integrate the laser in silicon. Uh, our roadmap over time will deliver the lowest cost per bit, the highest bandwidth density, the lowest power per bit. Let me shift to moving data. Data center infrastructure must, as we talked about at the beginning, store massive amounts of data. And equally importantly, we have to find a way to deliver real-time insight from that data. And so we've invested heavily in this part of the portfolio as well. The top layer of this memory storage hierarchy is something we're super excited about, and that is Optane Persistent Memory, an entirely new category of capability for data center system architecture. This is going to enable new workloads that weren't possible before, and it's going to solve many of these bottlenecks in the DRAM tier. When we build the products, there is much more we look at to make sure how we deliver performance in a data center. In order to bring Optane as a persistent memory into our, uh, our processor, we actually had to completely transform the system market, the memory system architecture, to be able to allow uh, what we call a load store interface for an application to directly interface with persistent memory. And I think the, the capacity of the workloads, the data that they're dealing with as they grow, this is going to be revolutionary in terms of being able to bring in all that data in a memory tier as opposed to in storage. It's not just a product, but we're introducing a totally new hierarchy, a new class uh, of product. Now, um, the persistent memory actually behaves like memory in that you access it directly through the uh, load store instructions. It behaves uh, like DRAM in that case. But unlike DRAM, it offers you large capacity points, its price is lower, and very much unlike DRAM, it's persistent. So it does not lose the contents of data once the power goes away. And I don't think it's an understatement to say that Optane persistent memory can completely transform the memory storage hierarchy. It's a $10 billion market, that's a subset of the existing data center memory market in 2022. And it's a great example of something that Intel is uniquely positioned to deliver. Rather than me sort of talk about this endlessly, I thought it'd be interesting for you to hear from a customer that uh, has been with us on this multi-year journey. And so uh, I'd like you to join me in welcoming Bart Sano, the VP of Platforms at Google. This is very exciting for us because it's different capabilities, as you're, as you're talking about. We've announced uh, a partnership, not only with the key partnership with Intel, but also with SAP, to uh, basically enable SAP HANA workloads uh, running on uh, GCP VMs powered by the Optane persistent memory, but also, coupled with that, the next generation processor technology, the Xeon processor technology that's known as Cascade Lake. So we're very, very excited that's about great. this. Um, so. thank, thanks, Bart. Um, now, this is exciting, and we're really happy about this, but I know that Google has been anxiously awaiting yep. your first production units. <laughs> we're and, always anxious. And I'm happy to report uh, that our first production units of Optane Persistent Memory shipped out of our factory yesterday. I have actually in my hands here wow. uh, the first production module of Optane uh, Persistent Memory. And I'm going to hand it to you. You Alrighty. may have to rip it out of my hands, <laughs> but I'm going to hand it to you now. So oh, thank uh, there, you very there, much. There you go, buddy. Thank you. We're thrilled about our partnership with Google, and, and, and we're also excited about the broad industry support we have on Optane Persistent Memory. Um, you can see every company you could imagine in the cloud service provider space, in our OEM customer base, our ISVs, are all working hard on getting ready for Optane Persistent Memory. So finally, let's talk about our strategy to process everything. We all know that workload optimized processing is gonna come in all sizes and all shapes, and we've been investing in decades uh, in this broad portfolio of products for this segment of the market. In addition to this year being our 50th anniversary as a company, it's also our 20th anniversary for the Xeon processor family. In those 20 years, Xeon has become the industry-leading processor for data centers everywhere. 
we have consistently delivered advancements year in and year out for our customers. And in those 20 years, we've shipped over 220 million Xeons and delivered over $130 billion in revenue from this portfolio of products. The reason for that success, I would argue, is that we have gotten deeper and deeper and deeper with our customers to understand their needs and tailored Xeon to the workloads that they care about. And you can see that over time. The big enterprises of the world needed to serve their customers differently with new products and services, new ways to do things, and new levels of efficiencies and capabilities that they hadn't used in the past. Indeed, our customers were transforming. And so our business had to transform to enable those customers to meet their aspirations. So uh, when we are building products, I mean, so that, that's a big consideration that in our architecture as to how we deliver both per core performance and throughput. And there are a number of factors that actually go into how you actually deliver that optimal performance. The way you actually connect all these cores, how you actually manage the data movement, the movement to the caches and so on across all these cores is extremely important. All of these factors are super critical to ensure that you have a really good per core performance, that is any one workload or any one thread running on it actually sees the optimal performance. So, this know-how we've developed over a long period of time gives us confidence that we can continue to tailor Xeon for the broad, diverse set of workloads that we all know our customers demand. And it also gives us confidence in our ability to continue to deliver leadership for Xeon in the future. A year ago, we delivered the biggest advancement for Xeon in the past decade. That was Xeon Scalable. It's doing very well in the market. It represents our largest early ship program. That was the program that we uh, uh, went under uh, and, and worked on with Google. It, it was the fastest Xeon ramp in our history to the first million units. It is 50% of our volume today in Xeon. Uh, but despite that, vo that milestone, it has significant room to grow. We're only halfway done. And in Q2, we shipped over 2 million Xeons, uh, Xeon scalables. So far, through the first four weeks of this quarter, we have shipped already 1 million Xeon scalables. So the rate of adoption is accelerating. Now, one of the things that we're particularly proud of on Xeon Scalable is how we've been optimizing it for one of the most important workloads, artificial intelligence. In 2017, we recorded a billion dollars in revenue from customers that are running AI on Xeon processors in the data center. So the obvious question is, what's next? Our next generation Xeon is codenamed Cascade Lakes. It's on track to ship at the end of 2018. It has many new enhancements, a new integrated memory controller. That's what enables the support for Optane persistent memory. It adds hardware-enhanced security features for uh, capabilities for mitigations, such as the Spectre and Meltdown vulnerabilities. It has higher frequencies, cache optimizations, new instructions, continued performance leadership. And as I mentioned earlier, AI is a domain in which we've been pushing the envelope, sort of reinventing Xeon for AI. And today, we are announcing that we're adding a new AI extension to Xeon that we call Intel Deep Learning Boost. And that will come with Cascade Lakes. This shows you that we expect to deliver an 11x improvement from the Skylake launch in July to the time we introduced Cascade Lake for inference performance uh, given that new capability. And I expect this to ramp very fast in 2019. And we're confident that we will maintain our performance leadership in 2019 on the back of this roadmap that I'm showing you today. At our earnings call, looking out a little bit further, we told you that we'd have a 2020 10 nanometer data center product. It's called Ice Lake. That product will be out in the market in that time frame. And today, what I'm sharing that is new is that we have created a flexible, feature rich platform that allows our customers to select the right CPU for their workloads that will support both a new 14 nanometer based CPU called Cooper Lake. Uh, and the 10 nanometer Ice Lake product as a fast follow-on. Cooper Lake will be available towards the end of 2019. 
uh, it's going to generate and deliver uh, a, a significantly uh, better generation on generation performance improvement. We're going to continue to uh, expand and extend the 14 nanometer generation on performance. We're making process improvements. We're adding architectural advancements. And we'll continue to push on the software front as well. One new feature that we will add, we are adding into Cooper Lake, is another new AI extension uh, under the DL Boost family. It's called BFloat 16. It's principally used for training kinds of workloads. We're aggressively standardizing on BFloat 16 and infusing it into all of our uh, products in Xeon, in our network neural processor family, and so on. The part I wanted to talk about is whether it's the edge or the network that Dan did such a good job talking about or the cloud that Regine talked about, there's going to be some unintended uh, data bottlenecks. And that's where the FPGA comes in. If you look at this slide, GPUs only fit on the right side. They can't do infrastructure acceleration. If you look at some of the SOCs and the custom ASICs out there that someone mentioned earlier, they can do one or the other, but they can't do both. Fundamentally, the FPJ is the only one that can do both. And then more importantly, though, FPJ is, is one in a very large set of assets at Intel, and I, I believe an unmatched set of assets. But when you take that FPJ and you marry it, whether it's in a package or on a board with a Xeon CPU or any other SOC technology, and you put an overarching software stack on it with IP, it's clearly unmatched in value. Now, all that great innovation is fantastic, but we need to do more than that. Our customers um, tell us consistently that one of the greatest challenges they face is the cost and time it takes them to deploy complex solutions. We, we spent some time thinking about how could we help them with that. And last year, with the launch of Xeon Scalable, we also launched Intel Select Solutions. And this is a, a program, uh, a deep sort of technology-focused program, where we verify configurations with workload-optimized performance. We engineer the solutions. We validate those solutions. We test those solutions with our customers at the hardware level, the software level. And essentially, we try to give them the easy button. We make it easier for them to deploy these complex solutions so they can accelerate their time to market. You've seen a full update today on the portfolio of products and the breadth of what we're bringing to bear on the market and for our customers. And I think you've seen us demonstrate that uh, we have had and continue uh, to have sustained leadership across a really wide data-centric infrastructure set of offerings. As those solution stacks have grown in complexity the, and the demands of IT have grown, IT in all industries has become not a support of the business, but it has become the actual business. We've worked with our ecosystem to find ways to not only solve their deployment issues and struggles that they face, but also from an Intel perspective, it's a way for us to accelerate that TAM that we've been talking about all day taking the guesswork out of what optimal configurations are and what optimal software um, setups are. We work extensively with the leaders. We worked with VMware on vSAN, vCloud Foundation, and actually created Intel Select Solutions based on optimizations for Xeon. The whole goal was to take what was the art of now clearly possible and make it deployable and consumable in the shortest amount of time. You heard Naveen earlier and Raj talk about the Intel Select Solutions. And we are going to build on that as well. We have one class of solution that is known as our Network Function Virtualization Infrastructure Solution, or NFEI for short. And then the second solution that we have is something called an ISS solution for universal CP. So I am confident that through these strategies, the software, the ecosystem, and these select solutions, that we can comfortably accelerate network transformation. And since the launch of Xeon Scalable, we've, we've worked with over 30, 30 industry leaders here to bring solutions for analytics, for hybrid cloud, for HPC, for network infrastructure. And today, we're announcing an expansion of that portfolio. I'm excited about this. We have a new program and select solutions around AI for big DL using Apache Spark. We have a new program 
Intel Select solutions around blockchain for security kinds of workloads. And finally, we have a new um, uh, SAP HANA certified appliance Intel Select solutions. So we've covered a lot of ground this morning, and I just wanted to leave you with three final thoughts. First, we're in a new era of data-centric computing. The cloud, 5G, the edge, AI, really is driving a profound shift in the way we think about the market. Massive amounts of largely untapped data. The data-centric opportunity that we see is huge, is larger than we've ever had in the history of our company. $200 billion TAM by 2022. It's growing at near double digits, and our ambitions are to grow faster than the market. And third, we have an unparalleled array of assets that you've heard about uh, from me this morning, an ecosystem that spans that entire data-centric product portfolio. And I think probably most importantly is that we are hungry to get after this market in 2018, 2019, and beyond.